I wanted to do a quick video showing you guys uh, how to make a dynamic website. And I, I'm talking very, like, I can do anything to this website, anything I want, and it won't affect other pages. So this is basically a template file that I've created for my website, which is 410online.com. Also, it's my local host right here. So basically, what's going on here is, here's, I've, I've sectioned off my website, okay? And I'll show you the code in a second. But basically, I have this top section up here that includes my nav menu. And the nav menu is using CSS rollovers to do this effect. And then I have this submenu, which is a submenu only for this annex folder right here. Okay, so this is a separate menu. And then I have this footer down at the bottom that's also a separate menu. And then I even have uh, an IE fix file that's pulled in as well. So let's take a look at, at what I mean by included and pulled in. Okay, and being a PHP page is very important here. So the template page is very short, and every single page that I make is follows this template. Okay, and this isn't a design template, really. It's it's more of a, uh, a code template, and and the reason for this is if I make twenty pages, if I make a thousand pages, and I need to change the menu, or I need to change a link on the bottom, or anything really that I need to change that's not content specific. I'm going to have to make that change to every single page. So if you design your website correctly, you can do something like I've done here to make the website very, very dynamic. So let me go through this uh, line by line to explain what's going on here. So first things first, this is a PHP file. So the first thing is I'm going to open PHP, and then this line defines a variable called absolute path. And this is a very cool shortcut for PHP. Uh, dir name underscore underscore file caps underscore underscore. What that's going to return, and, and this actually returns uh, slash application slash mamp slash htdoc slash 410. That's going to give you the root directory of this file. So when this is actually on the server, it'll be slash or slash htdocs or, or slash, slash home folder, whatever your home web root is. That's what this will be. This is very handy for doing PHP includes. And then I actually have added on to that um, dot dot slash. And the reason for this is, is because this template file right now is under the annex folder. So it's actually dot dot slash to go back to the home root. So I'm directing from this file back to the home. Okay. The next thing I'm going to include is a PHP file on its own. Okay. So I have... The defining the root directory, I need to do that, and now I'm going to pull in a PHP file for all my PHP headers. So anything PHP that I would need to do in the very beginning of the file, I can put here. And it's always going to be the same. Okay, I can put other PHP specific stuff here, but everything I want to be equal in this file right here. Now let's go over, jump over to this file and take a look at what session.php is. And as you might have guessed, it has to do with the session. So it it starts a session. So I'm going. I'm still developing this website, and I'm going to create sessions. And I'll explain to you what sessions are. But it keeps track of who's on the website at what period of time. So every and that needs to be on every single page. So if I include this file, it will be on every single page. So I've included this file. You can really ignore this right now. This is me working with session variables to determine whether a user is logged in or not. Again, when I start coding that, I'll I'll make a video about it. Then I'm going to require my constants PHP file and I'm going to require once so that I don't accidentally if I have to include it again and mess things up this is all my SQL database information my constants for the entire website are in this file I'm not going to open that up for security reasons same with um, this errors file I'm not going to open that up either but uh, I have a defined error section I actually could open that up but it defines all the possible errors all over the website so that I can use constants like this word is a constant now it's back it's defined as their name slash dot dot slash okay that's why it's there so this is a constant so now when I bring when I bring this error files in I can put errors on any page now and if I need to add an error that I didn't have before I can just put it in this file well once that's done I'm gonna close the PHP so all the PHP in the top is now done and the next thing you see here is actually the doc type 
Okay, you really do need to have a doc type, and you really need to have an HTML header. Obviously, if it's an HTML page, or any website needs to start with HTML. So if I jump back over the template, you see that the very next thing that I have written here is a title. So I'm missing the entire heading start and the HTML start. Well, that's because it's in the session, so I don't have to write it now. So this doesn't really need to be here, but I've lessened, uh, I've lessened what my page is going to do, what, what I'm actually having to load, what I'm actually having to write, sorry. So I'm, I'm writing less code now because this is the same for every single website. Basically, this, the practice is if you're writing something the same on every single website, you can make it an include file. So now this starts the doc type and the HTML starts the head and it also pulls in more files. These files that I'm pulling in are includes.html. So let's take a look what the includes are because they actually come before the title. Okay, The includes file is the jQuery script that I've been using. So, for example, I've been using, I've been linking right to their website. I've been hot linking. That's not good. So when I actually make this site live for real, I'm going to want to change this to a, a copy that I have on my server. Obviously, if I had this JS file, this line, on every single page, I would have to edit every single page. Obviously, now that it's in this file, I can just edit it right here. Uh, active content, this is for running Flash. This is for fixing PNGs on Internet Explorer 6. This is my custom JavaScript file that every every JavaScript that I have that any more than one page uses, it goes in this JavaScript file. Okay? And then, uh, where are we at? Includes. And then I have my style sheet. I have one style sheet for the entire website, and that's included here. I don't have to type this on every single website. Next thing down the line is, now this is specific to the page. This is my title of the page. Okay. Next thing that's specific is the metadata. You really need to change the metadata on every single page for search engine optimization reasons. You really want to change the... Well, this line doesn't have to be, but I'm not going to make a no include just for this line. And then... Uh, and then your keywords and your description. So this stuff is specific to this particular page. Then I'm going to pull in the IE fixes, and there are a ton of IE fixes. Okay, well, I don't have too many, but um, pull in the IE fixes. So this is too much to write. I'm going to put it in an include. Next thing is uh, specific styles to this page. Sometimes going through, you don't put every single style in the external style sheet. You should, but you don't always. And I know I don't. Sometimes I just want to add a stupid style to the page just to do one specific thing. So I'll go ahead and put those in here as well. Then I have specific JavaScript just for this page. Okay. So if I want to make just one function to, to do something quick, I'm never going to use it again on any other page, I'll put it up here in this header. Uh, and Basically, I do have a function call in here for jQuery. It grabs the body and uses the load event and then presses down the menu. I'm actually using JavaScript to push down this menu. As you can see over here, the annex menu is actually pushed down. So every page is going to have a specific push item. So that has to be specifically on this page. That's going to close our head. And then we have the top section. Now, I'm going to include the top right after the head. So Obviously, there needs to be a body somewhere, so let's go over to top and see if it is in here. Okay, so the first thing in the top section is the body, okay? Then I have the logo, which you see over here, and then I define a div that's going to basically be the entire width of my website. So now everything is within this div, okay, and it's centered, margin auto. Then I have my nav menu, the CSS rollover menu, and because the CSS file is already included, all that nav menu, that rollover menu, is is coded right here. This is this is the code for the nav menu. So what that means is, for top, every single page will have the same menu. So if I ever want to change this top menu, very easily done. I can just change this one file. Next thing that comes in is I just I kind of commented out. This is the start of the specific content right here. So everything that's specific to this page will go between these two lines. Now not every page has the annex menu. So that's why the annex menu is in here. It's only the annex pages. So that's why I've included the page here. And then once you've done all the specific content for the page, then you can pull in the bottom bar. And the bottom bar is going to have the bottom bar right there and the links in it. And it's also going to have the Google Analytics code so that every single page is going to have analytics. So let's take a look real quick at what the source looks like once, the, once web crawlers, etc., get to look at it. And you go see, you see I have the doc type, I have the HTML, there's my CSS, my IE fixes, 
There's my page. I'm running at a time. Here's the bottom bar. And there's my analytics. So you can see everything is there.